that way. No, just let him come on in. We're gonna we, we'll give him a few minutes. Um, we we'll I give everybody a chance. Just so you need to get to First Thessalonians, second chapter, twelve and thirteen. Good. Okay, then I'm gonna have you quote it. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We're going to do it in a second. We'll wait till we get some people in. Uh, you got your Bible? Oh, okay, somebody come share the Bible up here with these two gentlemen so they can see what we read. Yeah, you can. Just give it enough. Uh, wait till everybody shine in. Just turn your Bibles to First Thessalonians, the second chapter, twelve and thirteen. When y'all come to the classroom, you need to have your Bibles. Amen. Make sure you bring your Bibles. Everybody should have their Bibles. Everybody on Zoom should have their Bibles. It's like this is your this is your you know, when you take a class, they tell you what books you need to get. Well the book you need to get for this class is the Bible. Good right? Yeah. We're going to um, read this together and everybody get there. We open our Bibles to First Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. We're going to read it together. Any version, just read. Um, I know we probably don't have different versions, but all the same word. Amen. Okay, we're going to start at verse 12. Everybody there? I'm make sure everybody there first. Everybody on Zoom there? Everybody on Facebook? I hope you're there. Starting at verse 12. Okay, on the count of three, we will start reading. Amen. One, two, three. That ye would walk worthy of God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is the truth the word of God, that which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Point yourself to point your finger to yourself and say, I receive and I therefore believe. Amen. I want us, you may be seated. I thought it was interesting that the Lord brought me back there for today. Amen. Um, it's something that we should have never actually departed, I guess, but the Lord brought it back today. And I thought it was interesting because it says that yea would walk worthy of God who has called you unto the kingdom and his glory. Amen. Look at somebody and say, walk worthy of the God. Some, no, say, walk worthy of your father. For this cause, thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which they heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men. Amen. It is not my job to preach. That's why Paul said, I preach what? Not myself, but Christ Jesus and myself a servant. Amen. I can't add anything to it or take anything from my job is to preach the word of God. Amen. And 
and, but as it is the truth, amen, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So what is your job to do in the classroom? There you go. Say it again. Believe. In other words, if you are receiving the word, not that as it comes from man, but as it comes from God, then your job is to believe. Amen. Look at someone say, you need to believe. See, the, the, sometimes the struggle with people is that they're trying to receive a word. You're looking at the messenger. Amen. And I notice this, this is interesting in today because we have a lot of messengers. Amen. Can I get amen? We have a lot. We have black, white, and so we got variety. And this is a good thing. Many messengers, males and messengers. And the Bible says that in First Timothy, he says that when you receive the word of God, you should receive it not as you received it from man, but it is from God. Amen. And, and then he says, if you're receiving it, in other words, if God is talking to me, and, and I said this earlier, I think one of the greatest problems is people are having a problem with receiving it. And sometimes the problem with receiving it is you're looking at, well, I know Apostle or Barry, or I know uh, Prophet Barbara, or I know my pastor. But I like uh, that the writer says, um, Paul, or Apostle, he writes this, and Tim, I mean, that's alone, and he said, it is written, for this cause, also thank God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, you heard the word from us, amen, right? Ye received it, not as the word of men, but, it, it, but as it is the truth, the word of God. You received it as it is the truth and the word of God. And it's interesting, if I'm receiving something and I know it's the truth, and I know this, there are two powerful factors in this statement. First of all, what is being taught to you is truth. Second of all, who is the speaker that's speaking? Because a lot of times when you go to this place, you want to know if they're, anytime I go someplace, I want to know if they, what they're saying is true, number one. Amen. I want to know what you're saying. Is it true? And then number two, I want to know, I want to know who's the speaker speaking the, the word. Amen. But we find out in the scriptures that when we, you, you heard the word from me, but you received it as if it was the truth because you knew it was from God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got to know. And, and we, because you know it's from God, it's the truth. And you should say, I ought to believe. Wait, now, y'all, some of us are getting already. I ought to believe. Because I think today we're in a time where people are, com uh, are confused about if it's the truth. Second, the, the next thing they're confused about if, if it's from God. And the next thing they're confused about is, should I believe? So these components, are, they confuse, you see a lot of people, they're confused about, is it, I don't, know if, uh, I don't know if the Bible is true or not. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's the truth. So they don't wonder about if it's the truth, amen? Then they wonder, if you, if you wonder about something being truthful, then, you, then you're going to actually have a legitimate reason to wonder if you should believe it or not, amen? And then they, they but the writer of this verse says, he wants you to understand that it's the truth but it's not my truth. Amen? Y'all get what I'm saying? He's saying it's not my truth. I'm, you're hearing the word from me, but it's not my truth. It's the truth of God. So you might want to not only uh, receive it, you might want to believe it. Amen? You might want to know it's the truth, and, and um, you might want to believe that truth. And when a man of God or a woman of God or anybody that is speaking, when they're saying something pertaining to God, you should be measuring if it by, by you discerning if it's the what? Truth. And what, what, then if you're discerning if it's truth, did it come from God? And if it come from God, do you believe it? Amen? I wanted, God wanted to establish this before we go on because we used to, like I said, we used to say this all the time and we say, I believe. Therefore, I'm being, we used to say, I believe, therefore, I'm being transformed. Amen. I'm being transformed because I believe the word that I am receiving is truth. Amen. Amen. I believe what the words that you are preaching of God is the truth. I believe it. And then because I believe it, 
I, I, I'm going, it's transforming me. It's doing something in me. It's, it's, it's operating and functioning in me. So I, I wanted to start that out. And it's kind of interesting. Why is it doing something in me? Okay, this is what Paul said. I want, last week, I want to still go here uh, in the scriptures. He says, uh, I believe it was we, uh, we, we uh, Isaiah, was it Isaiah 53? Isaiah, yeah, 11, right? 53, 11. 55, 11. I'm going to say, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Amen. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish. Everybody say accomplish. See, say I believe that the word of God shall what? Be accomplished. Amen. Accomplish what I please. God saying that the word that is coming from his mouth shall accomplish that which he please. I mean, I mean, I've got that part right there. It said, but it shall accomplish what I please. It didn't say it might accomplish what you please. Y'all with me, right? So sometimes in you hearing the word of God from a preacher and it's the truth of God, amen, it may be, it's going to be accomplishing some things in you that pleases God. That in what God pleases. Now that the conflict might mean it you you yourself, your flesh might not be pleased by what the word is desiring to fulfill in you. I mean, get what I just said. Sometimes that's why I believe the scripture says the flesh wars against the spirit of spirit against the flesh. Why? Because the word is spirit, and what and what God has spoken from his mouth, that he says, So shall the words that, that God spoke. I'm sorry, so shall my words. Be that God goes forth, I'm God's forth from my mouth, goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return void. It's not going to come back empty, but it shall accomplish what I please. The words that come from God's mouth are not going to return void. They're not going to return empty, but it is going to accomplish that which God pleases. And I want you to remember this. That means the preacher might be preaching. Remember, we found, remember what we said earlier? That ye walk worthy of God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. It's, it, I would perceive since we, we want the kingdom of God, God's way of coming. He has called you into his kingdom means God's way of doing things. Amen. So the word that God is going to send forth over your life is going to cause you to function in a way that's pleasing to him and his kingdom. We always pray, Lord, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In other words, before we serve God, I mean, you know, before you knew God and I knew God, before we, before God saved you and me or, or delivered you and I, we didn't seek to please God. We seek to please self. Amen. And in pleasing self, we worship the enemy. Y'all, let's tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. When you were not pleasing God, you were pleasing yourself. And in pleasing yourself, you found yourself worshiping the enemy. Satan himself in pleasing yourself. And Satan gave you everything your so-called your so flesh desired. All the lust, filth, anything you wanted. And, 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 and the same, what's funny about the world, it'll give you what to desire and then turn around the same thing it gave you, use it to destroy you. Yeah? It's like being in Hollywood. The same world, the same world, or say, they'll give you the, the Grammy and give you all that. And if, then if you do one thing they don't like, then the whole world turned against you and then you're on Facebook, you cry, and you and that's why if you found your identity in the world, you're going to be in trouble. Why? Because the same world that made you think you were all great will be the same world that say you ain't nothing. So do never find your identity in something that can be snatched from you because that makes you unstable. Amen. You have to find your identity in that which cannot be removed. Even Satan challenged Jesus. He said, if I be the son of God, he challenged his identity. But Jesus knew who his identity was in when he said, man shall not live by bread alone. In other words, I can't live by the things which are temporal, but by every word which is eternal. Amen. Man shall not live by the things. That, and this we need to understand because watch, remember what we said. For this cause also Thank we God without ceasing, because when ye receive the word of God, which ye have heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is the truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. It's, uh, it's working in you who believe. Now, how many of you know if you don't believe it's not working effectually in you? 
If you don't believe that the word came from God, if you don't believe it's the truth, and you just think it's a word, you just think, well, that's just pop, uh, apostle, uh, somebody, that's just, and it's not a fact, you think you have options too. One time, a lot of times what people perceive is that depending on who they believe the word comes from, puts them in a position where they perceive they have options. Let me give an example. If your baby sister come in the room, right? Your baby sister come in the room, and she say, mama say, clean up this room, right? And when she say, mama say, clean up this room, you might be, you might be like, hmm, girl, you better get out of my face. I'll get to it. I wanna. You think you have options, even though she is speaking in behalf of her mama, you think you have options because you are more concerned about the messenger than the message. Y'all with me, right? You are more, sometimes when we are more concerned about the messenger, then the message, we believe we have options. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't really believe, I don't think that, you know, I don't really believe that I need too fast when the pastor say something. I don't really believe I need. See, if you believe, watch this, if you believe the scripture where it says um, the word of God, which ye heard of us, they received it not as the word of men, but as the, the truth, the word of God. So if the man, if the man of God, if God's unction him to call a fast, why do you feel like you have options concerning that fast? He's not saying something that's not in the scripture. Fasting is in the word of God. But we perceive we have options because we are look at the man and not the messenger. Now, what's funny is we change our we change our perspective when mama stepped in there because mama, you understand, she has an authority then you shouldn't be playing with. Can I get in? So if mama come in there, now we now y'all know we in a time now where rebellion is at such a high level that even if mama say it, she got to say it three or four times. Because why? Satan has successfully, to a certain level, attacked authority. He has successfully, to a certain level, made this generation feel like, let me give an example. I'm not, let me, let me, let me, I'm going to say it this way. I know I'm going to get some feedback. There's police officer who will pull you over. Now watch this. One police officer, let's say there's a thousand. Out of a thousand, five out of that thousand do something stupid. Do something outside the law. The law is not bad, but the officers chose to do something outside the law. Yeah? Therefore, making, 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 what it should look like is that they could not do what they took a vow to do. Yeah, because when you take a when when you become an officer, you take a vow, you take you swear in. They could not do that which they did. So now, what people say is now, when another officer pull you over and say, "Give me your ID," people take the officer through all these things. They start going off and start tripping. They what is that showing? They have no respect. So Satan moved, and he said, "This was Satan." I'm sure how he did it. He took the minority. He took a minority and turned it into a majority and said that we're not going to respect no authority because of what these five officers did versus this 4,995. 4, so we're going to ignore the 4,995 who have obeyed and complied with the law but those five, we're going to say, well, if an officer pulled me over, I'm going to ask him, I'm going to go through it. So he can't ask you questions. He can't. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you asking a question back. But if he asks you a question, then the way you talk and how you should move is that you should respect that authority. It's the same thing with teachers. It's the same. But see, if we notice that when it comes to positions of authority, we don't respect position. We don't respect the authority in our own homes. We don't even respect authorities in church. But this is what Satan did. Satan said, because why? If I can choose not to respect authority, or I can choose to respect the authority I want to, then there's no order. Then now order is based upon who, watch, watch how he did it. He said, now I'm going to make you God. I'm going to make you selective. 
instead of, because the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through his suffering. And even those Jesus confronted, he did not dis, he did not move in a way that he did not respect the authority. Neither did his disciples. Neither those before. King Nez, uh, um, the, the, the three Hebrew boys, they knew the king was wrong. But you do not see them moving in a manner to disrespect him. Am I right or wrong? But we in the day think we have, oh, I have a right or God would condone me. You are a liar. That's not true. Even if you stand in officer's room, you need to do it in a way that still reflect God. Even if your mom told you to do something, let's say your mom told you to lie. I'm not telling no lie. You all in. You ain't got no right to be going off on your mom and, and, and talking to her like she adore. Now, you do have a right to say, Mom, you know what? I love you. You are my mom and I respect you. And I can't, but I can't do this because God is not going to permit me to do this. But you did. Why? Because you the way, even the way you're doing it, you can't be held in contempt because you did it in the way of God. Amen? But see, you got people, you think you can do it and think, you, no, I'm, that's not the way God would have his people function. God is always moving in a place of representation. Even when it comes, and we have this issue when it comes to husbands talking to wives, wives talking to husbands, children talking to parents. We have this issue with understanding order. Amen? And God loves order. He designed order. Because without order, there's chaos. Amen? So, but when we believe, so we believe the word of God. Amen? So, so, so let me read it again. So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I who please. Who, who, when the word comes from God's mouth, who is it, who is it coming forth to please? Because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please who? God. I don't know what we get. It don't say please you. It said, please him. Please God. The word that he going to come, you might ask a question, but the way he asks that question, answer the question, going to be in a way that's going to please him. Because why? He's truth. He's holiness. He's right. He is all that is good. So if God is all that is good, the way he responds to your question or your situation is going to be good. You might not think it's good. You might not feel it's good. Just like a child might not feel as good when the mother or father tell that child, you're not eating this candy before dinner. The child may not feel that's good. The child may have some problems with that. But the child at that point is ignorant to what's going on in that situation in the purpose of that. Sometimes we are ignorant to why even the questions that we ask and what we're doing could be ignorant to what God doing. And remember we say God, God is building some to the bigger picture of what God, we may be ignorant because watch this, God will always speak from knowing the date. Somebody should have, yeah, should have God, because Jesus said, the only one knows the, one, knows the date that he's coming is God. So God always speaks from the point of what he knows. He even knows. So that means you might ask a question, and because of what he knows in his time and what he's doing, he's going to speak in a manner which is pleasing to him, but it's going to be beneficial to you. Because your mom know what candy can do to you, because your father know what it can do to you, they will speak from a perspective not about your feelings. This ain't about feelings. They're going to speak from what they know. They know that's not good for you, so you're going to get a no. Are we getting it? Gonna get, we gonna get, so we know that, watch this, please, and he shall prosper, and it shall prosper in the things on which I sent it. The word of God is going to prosper. From the, so what is our job? We found out in First Thessalonians, the second chapter, we got to understand first that we don't have, don't get caught up in man. The man he said, no, we, it didn't come from man. We believe it came from the, it's the truth, and it came from God. Amen? We believe it's the truth. We believe God is the author of it, and it's the truth, and we believe. We believe the word God is the author of it, it's the truth, and we believe. And because we believe, it's effectually, in other words, it's transforming us. So I believe that God is the author, it's the truth, I believe, therefore I'm being effectively changed in that situation. Say I'm being changed. I'm being changed. Now watch this. 
you might not, you and me might not understand the change. You might not even see or understand actually what's going on. Y'all with me? That's why this sermon, this, the name of this sermon, the title of the sermon is God knows what he is doing in your life. You might not understand what he's doing in your life. You to, oh, what you mean? I might not know. You may not fully understand what God is doing in your life, but God understands what he is doing in your life. Amen. Can I ask y'all a question? Do you all think Moses always understood what God was doing in his life? No, you, it's obvious. If you read Moses, you can see he did not always understand what God was doing. How many of us know? When you look at, when you look at um, Peter, do you believe that Peter, the apostles, did they always know what God was doing in their life? No. No, they didn't. The reason why some people today always think they know what God did, why? Because they got the reins. God don't have it. See, some people today, they always think they know what God is doing because they have the reins. But the only problem is, how is it that you have the reins over something when you don't know everything? You don't even know that you're going to take your last breath. You got all these plans, things submitted. You got all these things you're getting ready to my. But he said, but the Bible tells you don't do that. He said, you don't know what tomorrow going to hold, amen? The Bible said, you don't know what tomorrow going to bring. He said, you can ask, but you don't know what tomorrow going to bring. You don't know when it's going to be your last day. Amen? How you ever woke up and, start, and found yourself doing something in that day that you had no plans on doing in that day, and God got glory out of it? Amen? I mean, God did not consult with you. You his. You woke up that day, had no idea or no plans on being in that place, found yourself in a place. See, that's why people think, oh, I know everything. You are a liar. You don't know everything. God don't reveal. You know what? I'm talking about day by day. No, God, can, God don't have to tell you everything. The Bible said the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, right? He ordering it. And he don't need your permission. He going to get you to, hey, God, all of, am, I, am I right on? Anybody ever woke up and God had you? You didn't even know you was going to that certain church that night. You did not wake up saying, I'm going to tell you. You met somebody. You had a divine encounter during that day that put you in a situation that led you someplace that night that you didn't even know you was going that night. Amen? Say, God got me. But you got to trust him. See, you got to trust. Because see, if the Bible say that no man, watch this, no preacher know the time. Oh, no prophet or pa uh, no prophet, no pastor, no pa apostle know the date. That's what the Bible says. Only God knows. So that means they don't even know. So they might. So that's why they got to stay close to Christ and preach what Christ is. Preach, and you got to receive it as the truth, knowing it's God, knowing what that you got to believe, and that is effectively preparing you for what God is doing. Because you don't. Amen. Y'all ever notice there's a lot of people. After stuff happened, and they start prophesying. I kind of wish somebody would have prophesied 9 11 before 9 11 actually happened. And then, not only, but did it like the prophets do it in the old. When they came 9 11, they went and told everybody. They went and shouted from the top of the mountains, This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Not after they say, I, I knew that. If you knew it, then why didn't you tell everybody so everybody could be prepared and stop that? Oh, we, oh, we, we, okay, okay. It says, and it shall prosper in the thing for which he sent it to do. The words that a true man of God is preaching, if it is God and the truth, it's going to, and you believe it's going to prosper in what God is sent to do over your life. Amen. God knows, I woke up, I mean, this, I talk, and then I, I want, let me read 
Numbers 23, 19. God is not, God is not human that he shall lie. Not a human being that he shall change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? When God speak, he's going to fulfill that which he said. When he speak, he's going, there's an action behind what he said. He's not like man. When God speak, there's action behind what he said. When he speak, there's a fulfillment in what he does. Y'all got to get this. So when your pastor, may it be your pastor, teacher, apostle, when the Holy Spirit is moving through them, when they, they, you receive it not from man, but as from God, it's the truth. It's from, you receive it as the truth and it's from God. And it's effectually working in you that believe. I mean, it's transforming you, preparing you for what God is doing. Preparing you for that which pleases God and what God has established and it's going to be fulfilled and God's word going to come to pass. So in, in your life, amen. So God knows this is the word and God knows what he is doing in your life. Everybody, you need to rejoice. Somebody say rejoice. Say so you need to celebrate. Because God knows what he is doing in your life. Even if you don't know God knows what he is doing in your life. That's what he spoke to me this morning. I know what I am doing in your life. Even when you don't know. Amen. The God who watches over his word. Amen. The God who fulfills his word. The God that what? Well, I love this. The God that but it shall accomplish, that sends his word to accomplish the thing that pleases him in your life. He has sent his word to accomplish in you the thing that pleases him in your life. My God. That, that's it. Your life, it can be all kind of fire going on. It can be craziness. You can find, watch it, you can find yourself tossing and turning. You can find yourself wondering and doubting. But God's word has been sent and it is not paralyzed by you. When God releases it, it's going to accomplish by what he said. There is no excuses. There is no maybe. There's no I guess. When God speaks, he speaks the truth. And when we preach the truth, when we preach the truth, we preach Christ, we preach God. And when we preach Christ, when you believe, if you accept that truth, then that truth is effectually working in you to produce that thing that please God. Amen? Listen. Give some more backup. Thessalonians 5, verses 5, 5, 24. Faithful is he that called you, who also call, I mean, who also will do it. Faithful is the one who has called you. Amen? That's good news. Faithful is the one that called you. You did not call yourself. Matter of fact, you and I couldn't even get ourselves out of sin, couldn't get out of trouble, couldn't get out of oppression, couldn't get out of all the stuff that we. So the one who called you, in, what you did, you answered the call. And he brought you into fellowship with the word. And the word is truth. Producing in you that which pleases God. Amen. Somebody say producing in me. Anybody, have you ever seen the battle of its producing in you? Come on. Yeah. You see the battle of its producing in you. Because why? Why it's trying to produce in you is running into you. It's running into your plans. It's running into your thoughts. It's running into what you believe. But it's there to fulfill what God believes. It's there to fulfill that which pleases God. Because why? You were designed to be like God. You weren't designed to be like you. My God. You weren't designed to be like you. The fall. Because why? You and I all sinned. Falling short of the glory of God. 
So when you really want to know who you, when you want to, through all the storm and through all the craziness that's coming at you and through all the, the aggravation and the trouble of life, when you want to find out what God is really doing, you got to go back to the origin. You got to go back to where he spoke to me. Because why? There's a lot of feeling between that time that people start tripping. And they start inserting things that God says, no, no. And there are certain things that God allowed for a time, but hear what I just say. He allowed it for a time, but it was not going to continue. Amen? Y'all don't believe me. God didn't destroy David because he slept with, David had over 700 columns. I mean, Concubine. Solomon, Solomon. David, David had a lot too, though. But Solomon had a lot more. He, he passed it. They had a. Why wouldn't God? He had a time. But he went. It ain't that God was down with it. He know his plan. He, you ever notice that God, when he know his plan, because he know his plans for you, that God might have been moving real slow and develop you at one point. And then there come a season where God ain't tolerating a whole lot with you and telling you, let's move. And you're like, well, God, would, because he know the whole picture. He know the whole picture. Just like a, a parent might be slow with you at one point, but then they be like, no, no, hold up. You're getting a little too old for this. You're getting a little. And, they, and because they know the whole picture, they know they can't keep tolerating this right here. You, no, no, this, no, no. You, no, no, no. You, 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 you got to grow some. Amen? You got to grow some. You got to develop a little bit. You got to come on. You got to come up a little bit. You can't keep going for the same rope of dope. Amen? You got to come up a little bit. God knows. Remember I told you last time? I mean, I remember I asked God, I said, God, I said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. He said, Sons, I'm, he said, son, I'm building. And I'm going to show you it. I'm building. I'm building my people. You are, that's why God's telling me to tell you, you are significant. Point you and say, I'm significant. You are significant in what God is doing. His word is pleasing him in what is doing in you. But I'm suffering is pleasing him. I'm going through, I'm lacking this is pleasing him. I'm by myself, but it's pleasing him. And what his word is producing in you. Yeah? What you mean? God is pleased that I'm 26 and I ain't married yet? Yeah, his word is pleased. Being married don't make you saved, sanctified up there with the Holy Ghost. Don't make you closer to God or farther away from God. Well, I really, God said, that's nice. But Father, know best. I know the whole picture. God says, I know. And those that God, what the, those that God called in Christ, he gives them revelation of the whole picture. They get bits and pieces of the whole picture. Amen. He gives them revelation, insight, which when he gives revelation, if it's God, he's going to kick off a revival. It'll start dealing with them dead areas, them areas that God says, it's time for you to rise up. It's time for you to rise up. Are we getting this? But Philippians, watch this. this is, remember it says, faithful, Thessalonians 524, faithful is he that called you. He is faithful. He knows what he's doing in your life. Satan will try to convince you that God don't care. And usually the way he convinced you that God don't care, 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 that came out of your country. The usually way he convinced you that God don't care is that he off, he's saying that God is not doing what you want. I just got Not that God is not doing what he wants. He convinced you that God don't care because he's not doing what you want. 
You ever tried you like that? God really don't care because he ain't fixing this the way I want. He ain't giving me what I want. He know, I'm, I've been at this job for five years, God. They gave me a raise and I'm making it. <laughs> Somebody felt that. Oh, my God. God, I've been here five years and I got no raise. And... But we believe God when he says that, that he's the one that opened doors and shut doors. We believe God that he is the God that give increase. So if I believe the word as it comes from God, it ain't up to them to give me that, that raise yet. But God knows what he's doing in my life. God, I've been in the church. And, um, Pastor, been I'll be first one there, stack of chairs, and I'll be like, and he just don't, he ain't call my name to preach him. It's just, I don't know what he, he, I, he know I know more. He, he, he don't. But you said the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Oh, my God. So he ordered you where you sit, but you got a problem with it. But God knows what he's doing in your life. He know. He know exactly what he's doing. He know exactly what he When you don't know, it look crazy. Anybody ever? It look crazy? Look crazy. Wife might be tripping. Husband tripping. Kids tripping. Finances tripping. It look crazy. But God, is, he knows what. It ain't no. It's my season. He know what he's doing. He knows everything. He's the God that knows the day he's coming. There is nothing he don't know. And I got a problem with men of God acting as if God don't know when they speak. Like it's a guess. A maybe. No, I'm going to be okay where I'm at if God has me there. Why? He know where I'm at. I'm right where he want me to be. And God is faithful. Amen. He is faithful over his word to perform it. It cannot return void. It shall what? complete that which he has sent it to do. He's looking to please himself when he released the word in the world. And yet God is moving. And yet you might not like it because he might have you in a wilderness. Or a prison. I think about Paul, Peter. I said, God knows what he's doing. I think about Paul and Peter. Their ministry was so beautiful. Would y'all agree? It really was. Um, they were some, these were some bad boys in the kingdom. It really was. I mean, really, kingdom, I'm talking about. I'm using Paul and Peter because they look like they were front runners. Paul over the Gentiles and Peter over the Jews. I think what somewhat um, caused me to really see the glory of God is that they both kind of ended similar in the same manner. Paul in prison and Peter is. But one thing I notice about Paul and Peter in prison, maybe prison, maybe about to die or whatever, they never changed being the example of who God has called them to be. So that tells me they were never stuck on those things. They of God was being pleased through their lives. Come on, you got men that are praising God inside of a prison. Amen? Men praising God inside of a prison. You got men saying stuff like this. Do I be bound? The word is not bound. 
You got men who shunk celebrity status. Didn't want it. Rented their clothes and did not, did not want the people to worship or to praise them. Men who counted all things lost but to win Christ. Men who, in the beginning of their walk, born Peter, denied him three times. Walking with the so these men are not perfect men, but men you see God working in them. You don't see perfect men, you see them surrendering to a perfect God. And you see perfect mercy. You see perfect grace. In a time where we are so stuck on men. Instead of looking for God. You wanted to? So I just wanted to share a little bit of my testimony about what you were saying, because 2023 for me has been a true year of testing, trials, storms, tribulations. It's been one of the most trying years of my life. And I'll tell this um, recent testimony was that two months ago, really three months ago, I started this job and I hated it. And um, I basically was doing in-home sales and I would go to customers' homes and, and I would be crying on the way to my appointments because that's how much I hated it. But then I would go in and I'll start vibing with the customer. I've had prayer with customers in their homes, but it was just this overwhelming sense of dread that would come over me as I would drive from appointment to appointment. And I was talking to Apostle Lawberry and he was like, God knew you would be there, right? He got you right where he wants you at. And then I hated the culture of the company because every five seconds is F this, F that, F this, F that. And I'm so annoyed because I'm trying to fast. I'm trying to pray. You know, I have my fasting days or whatever. <coughs> but I got to go to meetings where the culture is just dropping the F bomb every five seconds. And he was like, <laughs> God got you where he wants you at. My husband was like, you got to stay in the fire. And I was like, and I'm being processed. So I just started embracing where God wanted me. I was like, if, if this is your will for my life, if this is where I'm supposed to be, then let me be accepting of that. And so when I'm crying on my way to my appointments, I'm like, I'm being processed, I'm standing in the fire, I'm suffering, and I'll just get through it. I'll have those moments until those moments left me and I was released from the job by God. And I thank God for that too. And um, I just like to say that tomorrow I start a new job. <laughs> but the point was I, I had to be so devoted and committed to what God was allowing, just what he's saying. Sometimes God will put us in the most uncomfortable positions. And he blessed me to thrive. I was the number one closer for the month that I was there. <laughs> And I am a closer, y'all. Anybody want to close anything? <laughs> but hey, I thank God he blessed me to thrive in the most uncomfortable position I've ever been in in my life. And I just had to adopt the mentality and the mindset that I accept God's will. And I just would talk myself through it. I had to encourage myself, get the YouTubes going, get the preachers going. Whatever it took, different days required different things that I had to do for me to make it through but I was devoted and committed to pleasing God and not just quitting. So I stayed in the fire and he truly released me. And that's all I wanted to share. Amen. God knows what he is doing in your life. He is faithful in he, he that he called you, who, is also, who also will do it. Philippians 1, 6, be, be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Be confident. Look at this. Be confident. That he who has begun. 
You didn't begun. He begun. You didn't call yourself. You didn't save yourself. Eh? He begun. Be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work, he has begun a good work in you. Amen? He sent the word. Yeah? That word is fulfilling his purpose for your life. Amen? It's fulfilling his desire for your life. Amen? His word can send you as a sheep among wolves and tell you be wise as a serpent and meek as a dove. Amen? His word can tell you to be a light in the midst of dark because you are about representing him in who you are called to be. Amen? He made you an ambassador of his kingdom. Amen? But sometimes ambassadors can go in third world nation. You know, so they can go some, and every ambassador is not going to some nations where it's beautiful. You may have, sometimes, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for America. I've been sent to London. Oh, thank you. I'm an ambassador for America. I've been sent to Iraq. What? Ambassadors can be sent to any place, any situation. They're called, but they're, they're, they're called to represent the or They're called to represent that who, which that has sent you. And God will be the one who sent you. Amen? 1 Timothy 6.12 says, fight the good fight of faith. If God knows what he's doing in my life, and I know his word cannot return void, right? I'm in a battle with my mind. Anybody has some mind battles? Mind battles with thoughts that are crazy, and I'm going, but I got to fight by knowing that God knows. God knows what he's doing in my life. I don't understand why I got to keep going through these. I don't understand. Paul said, Lord, I, 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 I beseech you three times. I don't, I need you to remove this thorn. I don't understand whatever the situation was. Paul is seeking God because while he is doing the ministry of God, ministry of God, he has an issue going on that he believes and know that God can resolve it. But God knows what he is doing in Paul's life. And God tells Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Telling me that there's some things that God is not going to remove, but wants you to remember that he is in control. Don't let what you're struggling with define you in a, in a means of understanding who you belong to. I know in whom I belong to. I know who called me. Amen? But I'm struggling with this. God, I need you to, my grace is sufficient. In your weakness, my strength is perfected. I'm going to show off who I am. They, but while I'm showing off who I am, the host is like, I'm so weak. You're looking at me, Apostle, you, you really preaching. You. God, if this thing I'm struck, I barely just, he said, but in, my, in, in your weakness, my strength is perfected. They're going to know, how is it that you can do this? And yet I just see you so fragile. I see. You know God will sometimes let you see somebody's weakness? You know God will let you see somebody's weakness? And then you be, be careful. But he'll let those who can trust because why? You might start with their weakness and try to disqualify them. But God says, but in their weakness, my strength is perfected. So I'm going to boast in my weakness about the God who is able to sustain me. I'm going to boast in my weakness about the God who can keep me. I'm going to boast in my weakness about the God that loved me. I'm going to boast in my weakness about the God who will never leave me or forsake me. I'm going to boast in my weakness because the God I know says I know what I'm doing in your life. I know what I'm doing. Somebody getting delivered right here. Because you've been wondering and fighting. God says, I know. You trying to figure it out. I know what I'm doing. I'm all knowing. 
I'm the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. I write the story and I end it. I know what I'm doing. What's your job? According to Scripture, your job is to believe the truth, God, the Word. He knows what he's doing. The Bible says, think it not strange. When trials come to try your, come to try your, faith come by what? Hearing what? He said, I told you I'm going to test you. Why do you find it strange when trials come, tests come to test your faith? See, I found out something about tests. You can talk a good game. And you can convince a whole lot of people, you know. But tests, the teacher sitting there with the red ink, the blood, saying cover, got to cover, got to cover, got to cover. See that teacher with the red... Cup, putting all, covering all. Have you ever had your paper back when you English in, on your, you saw that little red ink on your paper where they say all the errors that you'd have made thinking, and you like, I know I did this good. And you get it back. Amen. God said, look at somebody said, God said, stay humble. Because you ain't where you think you might be. But you're right where God wants you to be. Somebody, see, somebody should have rejoiced on that. You might not be where you think you should be, but you write where God think you, where you should be. Because my Bible tells me he who has begun a good work in you. You didn't even start. The, you didn't even start the plan to salvation. You did not start the plan. You did not start your life on the road to where you're at in life. Oh, my God. And if you are, then you got the reins. There's nobody in the Bible started their life where they ended up at. Not Peter, not Paul. Amen? Nobody. Name who? Not Matthew. Not Moses. Not Joshua. Not Miriam. Not Elijah. He said, like, I'm the author. I started. And what happens sometimes with us, we want to try to take over the reins after things get in a certain way. And God said, you sure you want to grab all that? Because you don't know everything. That's why everywhere in the scripture says those who are led. You, let me tell you something in this false gospel. You do not lead God. God do not follow you. He is not your genie. He is not something you rub on the side and, and give him your tent. He is not your Santa Claus. He is Abba. And some of us have a problem with God being Abba because we, don't, we never had an Abba. So you don't really know what that look like. You don't, when you never really had a father, it might be kind of hard for you to understand what that really, really look like. See, I know what, what, uh, what my father, I thank God, because I, 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 my father, it's one thing about my, my father was a disciplinarian. And it's funny, he'll discipline you at the same time, he'll love on you. I think the way God, the way God brought me up was really a, a gift. I really take it as a gift in the way God, what God did for me to understanding him. And the reason I say that is because my father would, I love my father. I love my dad. What was interesting, my dad wasn't perfect. No man is perfect. I love my dad. But one thing, you would hear me say my dad, but he was not my natural father. But I would never call him stepfather. He never conducted or moved or operated as someone that I would call step. When I play my first game, when I'm playing ball, I look up at the stands, my dad there. When I'm sick, my dad would bring my soup. He would bring me soup in the room, in the bed. He would rub Vicks on my chest when I had a cold. 
The same dad would be like, um, we told me to stop sitting on the edge of the table. <laughs> he gave me one chance and I ignored him. Man. He told me don't sit on the dining room table. That's where people eat. He gave me another chance and I didn't listen. So one day, I came in from school and sat on the edge of the table. He just kept talking to me normally, like, hey, you know, how was your day? And he walked right past me while I was sitting on the edge of the table. And when he went in his room, while I'm on the edge of the table, all I felt was something hit my back. Boom. Well, brother just took off. Pop, pop, pop. Boom. He was a chastiser. But he chastised with warning. He done told me three times not to do that. By the, third time, by the third time, he ain't say nothing. He, 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 he didn't say he, he let, at that time, he let his correction speak. For I would like to let y'all understand that I did not sit at the edge of that table anymore. Even when I, I'm, I remember, and he'll give you that look too. My daddy give you that look like, <laughs> that little smile like, well, I know you ain't going to. I think God sometimes gives us that look, that little smile. Boy, I told you, don't, don't do that. See, father, when you have a father, you realize you don't tell him anything. You ask him and you communicate with him. I don't, I don't go tell my dad I'm going to a party. It didn't, just, it didn't happen that way at my house. I'm not going to my dad and tell my dad, I'm going to ask my dad, is it all right for me to go to this party? When it was going to a friend's house, I don't just go with my friend. I, I had to ask my dad, is it all right to go with a friend? But I think what God was teaching me, even when I wasn't scared, I don't know. God just, he was teaching me, I want to show you your love of a father where it's not connected through birth. So you can understand when I said I grafted you in. And you can understand. See, I can understand when he grafted the Gentile in that his love was no different. Matter of fact, his love was so, God's love was so overwhelming for the Gentile that they could not even tell the difference. Because I have a younger brother, a younger brother that is my father's a biological son. And yet, he never made me feel different than my younger brother. So I see God that he doesn't make you feel different as a Gentile. He, sometimes when we see people going to, they're going into try, trying to become Jewish, you don't have to become Jewish for God's love. You have to do it spiritually, though. What does that mean? Jewish just meant God's people. Are we getting this tonight? Being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good works in you that he will complete. Say, God going to complete what he's doing in me. He know what he's doing in me. He's going to complete. Stop getting frustrated by stuff you ain't got no control over. Amen. God know how to get you from point A to B. Amen. Well, I, I want one, one area in the Bible that I really love. I see God's patience. I see his kindness. I see his gentle. I see a lot. In the, it's in the story of Gil, Gillian. 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 I always said Gillian. The story where Gillian led God's army. But what was funny about Gillian that, is that he had an issue when God spoke at first. He didn't really believe God was speaking to him. And he said, God, come. See, that's what. I'm going to tell you something. I want to give you all. Please hear the spirit of the Lord tonight. God is not upset when you ask him to confirm something. I don't care what prophet who speaks to you, whatever, ask God to confirm it. The Bible says out of two or three witnesses, see, the problem is we don't have, see, people have become so stuck on people, they don't ask God to confirm anything. But my Bible says out of two or three witnesses, let the word be established. That's what the word say. I need to know why I'm investing a lot on what you're saying. I need to know. And any man or woman of God, don't, they don't care about you going and saying you're going to pray on something. Why? If they sure God said it, God gonna confirm it. Amen. God will confirm it. Because his word don't return void. His word is prospering in what he sent to do. He has 
uh, is going to accomplish that which pleases him in your life. God's word is accomplishing that which you don't even know. Sometimes we be like, I don't know if I'm pleasing God. And God be like, yeah, you please. Because you measure your stuff according to you and not according to God. Because sometimes we measure ourselves on what we think we're doing for God. And God measures on you based on who you're becoming in God. Amen? Because just like people can do a whole lot of stuff for you and not even be for you. Because why? They have a hidden agenda behind it. But God knows our agenda. He knows our hidden thoughts. He knows everything about us. That's, that's why it's so awesome. He knows everything about you and me. He knows everything about time and seasons. He is all-knowing. So who best to let guide you? Then the one who know why you're asking that question. Then the one who knows what's going to happen to make that situation happen or not happen. David went to God and said, God, they got my wife and children. He a mighty, this is a mighty man. Am I right? Mighty soldier. This cat don't lose no war. This cat go to battle. They take his wife and his children. He goes, David said, I ain't going to win without asking God this. Why? I want to know if I'm going to win or not. Many of us don't ask God about our situation. When I had the battle with cancer, I knew I was going to win. He told me I was going to win. So I stand here cancel free today because I, he told me. Yeah. At my job, I have excelled and prospered there and gone and, and done many things that I've never done. Why? Because when it went dry, he told me to stay. I didn't stay because I wanted to stay when they, they couldn't even pay me. He said, stay. See, you know why I have a, 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 the way God raised, let me tell you how God raised me. I've heard God speak and I've seen him do exactly what he said. So that's why when it comes to problems, I'm, I'm locked in because I know I've seen in my life, he spoke with my wife. My wife, for some reason, she wasn't really crazy about her brother when she first saw, I don't understand what the problem was. Maybe she needed glad. I don't know. <laughs> but the 23rd, then I seen a situation with my wife where this was going to, and even, I mean, storms, where the wife was like, I'm done. It's like that. Thursday, the 23rd, made 27 years being married to my wife. Yes. Oh. God, speak it. Do you believe it? See, because I think we have a church today that only believe the part you want to believe. And don't believe, and they, they, they and we so, I'm telling you, we so, I'm not, Follow me as I follow Christ. I'm a man of light, passion, just like you. The words that I'm preaching, that I preach, they're not my words. They're his words. That's why I said, if you have a problem, come show me in the word. Because I, I laid, I remember one time I prayed for, I said, God, I don't want to preach. This was years ago. I said, God, I don't want to preach nothing but Christ Jesus. People come go, I don't care. My job is to preach. I only want to preach with Jesus. I only want to preach what you want people to preach, what, what you want me to preach, Christ. Why? Because if this is the classroom, I bet if you came, to ma how, you came to major in Christ, can I get an amen? If you came to major in Christ, if I preach anything out of Christ, then I, det I taint your degree. And if I taint your degree, you're not going to be able to master sin. Because Christ is the only one that caused you to be able to master sin. Amen? Fight the good fight of faith. Fight with that word God gave you. He know what he's doing. It might not look like fight with it. Stand on it. When you're in a situation where your wife or the job ain't paying you, going on a year and a half, and God stand there, and light bills are coming, and these things in the natural. Let me tell you something. The reason why you got to know that God knows what he's doing in your life is because sometimes in the natural, it going to look crazy. It going to look like what God said look crazy. The natural look crazy. You took me, Moses. Moses, God, you say you're going to lead me by the cloud by day and the fire by night. Amen? 
I believe, God, I believe that you spoke to me. And I'm following the direction you told me to go in. And you told me, I know it was a shorter way to go, but you told me to go this way. And God, there's an ocean in front of me. And I ain't never seen no ocean open up before. I ain't never heard of nobody saying, I ain't paid no mortgage in a year. Some, and their house ain't get four clothes on. Amen. I mean, when I can I tell you something funny? I'll tell you when I when I this this actually happened. Um, I was when I was working for Equal Opportunity Family Health Center where God when I first started in this field. God told me He said I'm, I'm gonna make this. Now I remember I told you I left college and I left college to go to um in the sheriff's department and I took classes and I became an FTO there. And what was funny was, when I was at Equal Opportunity Family Center, I saw this, I'm walking, and on the bottom of my foot, I put this thing, I wrote down, God told me right now, you're going to be a director. I'm like, a director? I'm like, what's funny right now, if you go on, my, uh, if you go on our job, on, my, on our job, which name, it says um, director, program director. God don't lie. He he didn't he he don't lie. I ran into men who lie. I ran into men told me I have run into men that prophesied me you're gonna be in a building by this month at the end of time this month. And then that month there was no building there. He lied. Then I ran into same man. I prophesied something. Lied. Ran into another man and said you are gonna have a son. Told this woman she gonna have a son at the end of this period. She had a daughter. That's a lie. God don't miss. He say, and what he say happens exactly like he say. Ain't no room for me. There's no room for error and lie and truth. It is, it's either the truth, either it's the whole truth, or it's not. And God is so precise. Why? He don't ever want to leave you confused. Because if he leaves you confused, you got an argument point. You got a point to argue. God don't play like that. There's no point to argue when God speaks. Why? Because he is the truth. When he say it, he is able to do exactly what he said he going to do. Amen? He said, open the ocean. The sea split. They walked across. Not one was killed on this side. That's thousands of thousands of people walking across but God is able to hold off your enemy until he gets you to that point and once they got to the other side the enemy pursued let me help let me I want y'all to grab this the enemy can't walk in faith he can't go where faith is taking you that's why you got to get rid of your old man the enemy, I want you to remember this, the enemy can't go where faith is taking you. Why? Because he has no desire to please God. And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So with faith, you're pleasing God. If he start pleasing God, his kingdom is divided. It's in the Bible. When he turned around and talked, when he talked to Satan, when Peter was speaking, he says, he says, Satan, you are not mindful of the things of God. He is not, Satan does not look to please God. Amen? So when you walk in faith, you are pleasing God. So the faith that you're walking in, he can't walk in. So if you want to defeat the enemy, walk in faith. If you want to crush the enemy, walk in faith. He tried to follow him in the water, though. He did try to follow him in the water. He, he'll try. But faith destroyed him. Faith crushed him. They tried to throw him in the Hebrew. They tried to follow the Hebrew boys. They threw him in the fire. They tried to follow him by throwing, by throwing, but they died. 
and they were able to walk around in it. The woman you are becoming, the man that you become, if you just believe God and let his word take you to the place where it's pleasing, Satan got to go. He can't follow. He can't follow. A lie can't follow where truth go because truth will destroy it. Hate can't follow where love go. Love will destroy it. Kindness. Oh, my God, if we could just get it. So, God, do what you're doing in me. Why? Because that's going to give me the victory. That's going to deliver me from the enemy. Because the enemy cannot pursue. Darkness cannot go where light go. Light will destroy it. He says, because life will destroy it. Darkness is they can, the Bible tells you they cannot coexist. So I believe God, amen. I believe what God is doing in my life and I'm getting victory every day. How many of us getting victory every day? You're getting victory every day. It's like you, start, you, you started out smoking two packs of cigarettes. Now you're smoking just two. They like, people like, you know what? You're... Then you got people want to come off on you because you're smoking too. But they don't know your story. God ain't with you. Because they, they just see the two. You, a, you know what? You're you a, you a sinner. They don't know that you have been delivered from the fact that you smoke too. And, you re, and God, it, he's cleaning you up. But you ain't got to worry about them understanding. You need to understand. You know. He can't be the Messiah. The, word, the scripture says the Messiah come from Bethlehem. Hmm. See, sometimes people only know things about you when they're intimate with you. Everybody don't know. He can't be an apostle. An apostle, see Christ. How you know who he done seen? How you know who God done visit? You can't say God won't visit you. You can't say God won't visit him. Why? He visited Paul after he ascended. So if he did it then, why couldn't he do it now? He showed that he would do it. Am I right? He visited Paul after he ascended. So if you try to say he won't do it, you will lie. He already did it. He already showed he would do it. That's why sometimes I ain't trying to be, I ain't saying I'm right, but I'm just saying that's why people say a woman could be an apostle. The only reason I have a problem with a woman being an apostle, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't really, I can't, because I don't see it nowhere in the Bible. He never did it. It's nowhere shown in there. I ain't trying to be funny, but if he never did it, why are we doing it? I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just saying, what, I mean, if you, you got to have an origin, you got to place a reference. If he, um, if he never, if it's not in there, why is it in there? Who told us that you, who told you that you had the authority to walk in that office? He never showed, he never gave that office to a woman. Now, if somebody showed me that I'm a change, I'm just saying, I can't, I'm not going to go battle with that woman. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I've been blessed by some women. I'm not going to, I'm not. I'm just, it's not in there. So when somebody asks me, it's, I'm like, it's not. Just like, just, that's like, I used to think, I used to think that, I remember one time me and my daughter, we was talking, right? We were talking, and I was like, I can't preach, I won't talk against wine. I won't speak against wine, and because why? To speak against wine, and I think like that would be, you know, it'd be a lie. Oh, after that night, I, God woke me up, he said, let me show you something. Let me show y'all something. I thought this was interesting. I'm, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong. I'm about to show you something, though. Um, depending on your position, because in Proverbs 31, he makes it perfectly clear in the scriptures. It says, it is not for, a, it, it is not for kings, O Leman. It is not for, a, for kings to drink wine, nor princes strong drink. He says in Proverbs that a king should not even desire any type of alcohol, any type of drink. Because it would persuade his decision making. I was like, oh, I never saw that. 
But I believe God took me there because I had made a statement to them that as a man of God, I would never preach. In, uh, I'm not going to say anything. And I'm not going to say, but I now understand the contents in which it stays. That now, because I want to preach the word truth, that as one that walks in authority, it ain't for me. Because I, I believe the word, it's not for me. I'm not. And, and then I'm going to tell you something, one walking authority too. You know how they say that women shouldn't teach? That Proverbs 31 is kind of interesting too because that's the mother of the womb teaching the king as a son. And the stuff she teaches him is really powerful because she, she teaches him about women too and don't give your strength to women. I'm like, this woman, see, we always like Proverbs 31, but I, I never really studied the first part of Proverbs 31 when she's talking to us on the king. So we always like the last part. But Proverbs 31 is a woman, and she is teaching a man who becomes up in authority from her womb, but she is teaching him things. You'd be like, wait a minute, hold up. You might not want to say that because she's kind of teaching him things that, that you would say the older man, but she is teaching her son, and these things she is teaching him. So I said, we got to do a thing with women because why? She is teaching her son to grow up in a certain way to see certain things. I don't know, I just, uh, just say, for, if you want to just go for yourself, go read Proverbs 31 too, because it's, it's in there. And it does say a king. It said kings should not drink wine. And prince should not drink hard drink. So now I can't make that statement because depending on the authority that you're in, you ain't got no business drinking alcohol. Especially if you are an authority. According to Scripture in Proverbs 31, especially if you are in a position of authority that you make decisions concerning people's lives. He said, basically, because if you go read it, he said, in case you be in a situation where you, you know, you've been drinking and you make the wrong decisions concerning somebody else's life. That's, what the, that's why, man, the Holy Spirit, and I, I, I did not plan on going, and the Holy Spirit took me, and I was like, I woke up, I said, God, how come you taking me to Proverbs 31? I said, what they got to do with it? And when I read that, I was like, oh. I'm going to tell you how I know God be listening. Because when I read Proverbs, it was a lot of stuff that we were talking about that night that he showed me in the scriptures. Y'all ever had a conversation and God started talking to you? You be talking to somebody and later on God show you in the Bible exactly what you was talking about and show you if you was, even if you was wrong, he'll show you, you might not, let me show you this. The Holy Spirit is always present. And listen, he will guide you in truth if you want it. Amen. And then you're going to hear people say, don't be sending me no emails. Let me text me talking about I said that you can't drink no wine. Half of us, you, what you're drinking today ain't wine anyway. What we drink today is considered wine. It's strong drink. The alcohol level in it is crazy. And you know you're not having one glass anyway. Half of the people, half of the, so, the so-called saints that drink wine get drunk. And the Bible tells you to stay sober-minded. Okay. Period. Now I'm going to keep on rolling. Because I know some of them... Am I possible to talk about you can't drink wine? No, but if you are king, and then the Bible says he made kings of kings and lords of lords. If you are a man of authority, read Proverbs 31. I'm not saying it. That's what the word said. Isn't that what the word said? Anyone? He said, kings don't drink. And he didn't say, he said, scripture says wine. Someone said, well, King Solomon, they drink wine. I don't know. Go talk to wisdom. I don't know. Go <laughs> talk to us. Go have a conversation with Timothy. I want to say, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life. I'm fighting because I'm taking hold of what? I'm fighting with the word because I have a promise that takes me what? Eternal life. I'm not gonna let you move me off of what God is doing in me. The blessings God doing through me. Why? It takes me to what? Eternal life. I'm fighting a good fight of faith because that's what I have to stand on. I know what God is doing. I, I, God know what he's doing in me. He knows how to get me to what? Eternal life. Amen. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called. You were called. When you were called, you were called to what? It was an eternal life. Because when you were called into the fellowship of Christ Jesus, Christ is that gift that takes you and I to eternal life. Come on, y'all. So death can't touch you. Amen. He is giving you the gift that's past that which is temporal. 
eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession. This is what, when you made your good confession, when you accepted Christ, you made that confession of salvation, you received, you confessed that to eternal life. And then he says, in the presence of many witnesses, many witnesses, don't be no closet Christian. Everybody should know that you don't confess Christ as your Lord and Savior, and yet you have received the promise in Christ Jesus, the calling which has taken you to eternal life. Amen? Well, I don't really want to, you know, I don't think it's important for everybody to know I'm a Christian. Your confession that you made before many witnesses that you believe the word. Because sometimes people sit in church, they don't really believe the word. We don't, we don't tell people like that. They didn't really believe people. Oh, let me tell you what people don't really believe the word. They don't believe the word when it comes to relationships. Many people do not believe the word of God when it comes to relationships. They believe when it comes to relationships. You know how the scripture said the just shall walk by faith and not by sight? People are like, that's a lie. I know what I like. I am not going to walk by I'm not going to walk by faith when it comes to the man or woman I want. I gotta know it. I gotta know. I know what I like. But I thought you was a dead man. I thought you denied yourself, picked up your cross, and followed him. And I thought he led you down a pathway of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, but he gotta be sick. Look. God know, I don't, God know you got to be six foot five. God know I don't like no short man. I don't like no woman. God, you know I don't like no, I don't like no dark skinned woman. God, you know I don't like no dark. Come on, God, you know, you know what? God, you know what I, you know. But I found out that the world is working in you according to his pleasure. According to what he like. So it's kind of interesting to think you might not like God like. The thing you call ugly, I don't think God calling his creation ugly. Oh, we ain't getting this. We ain't getting this. I know my list. I know I want him to be this, this. You know, because see, so-called Christian women and Christian men, you got your little list, and I want him to be like that. And your list comes from your carnality. So, but see, since the word is working into you and for his pleasure, since his pleasure, and he know what he's developed and designing in you, because you done denied yourself, pick up your cross, and you follow on him. Amen? And since he is love, amen, and he's not calling his own creation ugly, because God don't find you ugly. He find what you do ugly, though. Amen? Or what you do is ugly. You ain't ugly, but what you do is ugly. She in the strip club. She is not ugly. What she doing is ugly. He, he in the transition, he, he's, in, he's, he's a trans. Uh, he's not ugly. What he is doing is ugly. Sin is ugly. Sin is ugly in God's eyes. But his creation is good. What he's doing is good. What God is doing in your life is good. You don't understand all of it. Amen? But God knows what he's doing in your life. God know, my brothers and sisters, you know he know what you're fighting with. Amen? He know what you're fighting with. We can't hide from God. He know the thoughts in our mind. Amen? He know what you're battling with. He know everything about you. Then he tell you to come boldly before him. Act like he know. What is he saying when he say come boldly? Don't hide from me. I won't cast you away. Come boldly before me. Let's talk about it. Let me show you. I've been tempted on every side, and yet I sin not. Let me show you how to get rid of the ugly. God says, let me help you all. Let me help all of you get rid of the ugly. And some of us are like, can I just hold on to the ugly for a little while? I feel good. I just want to hold on to this ugly attitude I have for a little while. I want to just hold on to this ugly selfishness I have for a little while. I just want to hold on to this ugly, guilty profanity mouth I got for a little. Just a little. Why? Because, God, you know I use it when people try me. When they try me, God, I just, I just pull it on out and, and use it. And then God said, but when you do, they can't see me. So can I get rid of the ugly? I, don't want, to, I want you, but I don't want the ugly. Y'all ever remember, it's, it's a Western, it was called the good, the bad, the ugly. You know what I'm saying? The good, Clint Eastwood was in it. 
and they call him, I think he was a good. I don't know why they call him he was a good. He was killing everybody in the movie. You know what I'm saying? The good, the bad, and the ugly. God want to call you out because he want to give it to the he want to bring you to the good, but he got to get rid of the bad and the ugly. Some of us, you deceive because you don't think you got some bad and the ugly there. But that's okay because God began to shine the light on you and he bring you in and he preached the gospel and he began to peek in. You'd be like, oh man, God, you hit me in a certain spot. And he said, go right, repent. That's all right. I'm cleaning out the ugly. I'm getting rid of the ugly. You majoring in me, right? If you majoring in me, that's why you got to grow. Amen? Amen? Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. For eternal life, which you were called when you were made, I mean, which, I'm sorry, which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen. I want to read this, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Cast down imaginations. Amen. See, when I'm with him, I'm confessing. I, I know who God is, but I find anybody who got to cast down imaginations. Amen. Y'all with me? That's a bad, in our mind, only imaginations, man. Your imaginations can take you to some real crazy place. Anybody know? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Your imagination can really take you to some crazy places, man. It can be some, oh, my God, your imagination. For, and if you don't capture that thing, you got a full poem movie going in your mind. No, you do. You, you imagine one thing, and the next thing you know, you got a whole poem. Where, oh, my God, what in the world? I don't even want this. What's going on? All I was doing, I was just wondering. Her neck was pretty. Now her neck, you got a breast, you got everything. Oh, my God, a whole, why? Right. Capture that imagination. Amen. Amen. You start imagining, you start imagining, man, I just saw a little, I saw I've seen money next thing. Now you, now you imagine all kind of wicked things to get money, wicked devices to make money. Amen. You see, they, 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 they start imagining, all those things, they have no strip club, they have, we talk about strip club, all those things, they have no porn shops, that things came from somebody's imagination. The movies come from somebody's imagination. The movies that we watch come from somebody's imagination. But he says, cast down. Somebody, somebody said, cast down your imagination. And every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. You got to know how. See, when you believe the word, right? When you know it's from God. You know the truth. You know it's from God, right? You believe. You got to, when that word is going forth and it's working inside you, it's going to have you, it's going to seem like you're battling in yourself. You know why? Because you're going to find yourself casting down thoughts and imaginations. Amen? Imagine that you're going to find, how many of you, anybody find yourself, you find yourself battling what you know, that thought, don't, that ain't, that is not how God wants you to speak. That is not how God wants you to act. He say, cast down the imagination in every high thing that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. That's interesting, because he said, my people are destroyed for a lack of, in Romans 1, he says, my people refuse to retain Knowledge. So people refuse to retain knowledge. People, they, they, they were destroyed for knowledge. But he says, I want you to have the knowledge of my word. That I want you to have that word I'm sending to you, right? That word is producing in you that you can cast down anything, any imagination that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of who God is. Anybody see those battles? But I'm fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. I'm fighting with the word that I know that I heard my pastor preach or I heard or I read it in the word. I'm fighting against that word that's working in me, a pure heart. Only the pure heart shall see God. I'm fighting with that word, amen, that God, that I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm fighting with the word of God. What I believe, what God has said about me, I believe that I have the gift of eternal life, amen. I believe that God before me, who can be against me, amen. I believe that nothing can separate me from the love of God or pluck me out of his hand, amen. I believe I'm a royal priest. I believe what God says about me. I believe what he preached. I believe it did not come from man. I believe it came from God. I believe it is the truth. And when the enemy come in with that lie, I fight and cast down them lies. Amen? I believe I'm a new creature. I believe all old things are passed away. Not some, not a little bit. I believe all things. When people come to me to my girl, remember I used to hear that? You ain't hit this. You don't even know me. I believe all old things passed away. Homeboy, when you left to be making that money, you said, no, nah, you got the wrong person. Why? I'm a new creature. All old things. I'm not making songs or writing things about something God done delivered me out of. I'm going to tell you how God brought me through, but I got to tell you about the new man about what he done done in my life, amen? Hmm. I know who I am, I believe God. So I cast down, I cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself up against the knowledge of God uh, and bring it into captivity. Say, bring, say it's your time to bring it into captivity. 
got some thoughts that try to tell you this and tell you that. You got to capture that thought because what it's trying to exalt. What, what, is, what is the word saying? When your thoughts try to exalt themselves above the thoughts of God. When your desires and your wants begin to, you ain't consulting God, begin to exalt itself. He said, you better capture it. Because some, we sometimes only think about that in a negative way. When people say, you know what, we, we like to think about it, and, it, and, it, and it's true in a negative way. Like somebody say, well, you know what, you ugly, or you know what, you, 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 your low self-esteem to beat you down. You ain't going to never accomplish nothing. You're not going to. We know it in that way. But what happens when it comes in the flattery way? We see we we when usually when we we talk about this we talk about the way and say you know what the young ladies I know you're dealing with that low self esteem and men I know you're dealing with these issues and you got to cast them thoughts down anything but it's funny in the time that we are in now where self ambition in the time that we are in now where it talk about be the best you in the time where we are in now where it's all about self elevation you better watch what you're holding on to and let it exalt because now you're exalting yourself above God because you think you somebody. But the Bible says when a man thinks he's standing, he fall. When you think you something. So we won't believe. Because watch this. It wasn't a negative thing, uh, Lamar. It wasn't a negative thing when Satan told Jesus to turn that stone into bread. That ain't negative. Am I right? Especially if you're hungry. He said exercise your power and turn that stone into bread. That's not something like low self-esteem. That's not something like a bad, uh, bad attitude. He is saying meet your need. But Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So what that means? Satan can come to you and tell you to do something. And you can have the ability to do it. And God ain't never tell you to do it. Because you ain't never heard the true gospel. Because you ain't never heard that even if it's a good idea. You better still bring it to God. You still better ask God. And that's what, see, in this prosperity gospel, that's where it fooled a lot of people. Because why? If it came in a manner or it seemed like it was self-benefiting you, you perceive it had to be God. Even if it took you to a job where you were so busy, you ain't have time for God no more. Even if it took you to a woman that don't want to, she don't want to pray with you. She don't want, she, she loved going to the club. It took you to a place. And you saying, God. And you have to, we said today, God had to do this. Are you sure God did that? Why do you perceive God had? Because it was good. Good for who? Good for who? It was good for you because a man is carried away by his own lust. This is not a sermon that God will not add things onto your life that are very favorable to your life because he always do. It's a sermon to understand that you better be alert on who God, you better know God's voice and you better understand and be sure about what's coming at you because come on. Look, let's look at the number three thing he came to Jesus with. This don't seem negative. Just bow down to me. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Hmm. You're going to make my name known? People are going to holler and crouch in my name? They're going to build statues to me and they're going to give me Grammys and Oscars and Tonys, and all I got to do is make movies killing people and having sex and lying and cheating. That's all I got to do. And then tell kids to do the same thing. Oh, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll write some lyrics that got profanity and filth and degrade women. And tell you to go get what you want when you want it. And, and then use pride about how I'm the best in the world. You exalt yourself. I'll do this and you're going to pay me and make me rich. I'll bow down to you, of course. Of course I'll bow down to you. And take thousands with me. That's a good thing. But 
but it ain't a godly thing. And don't let people fool you. God don't do evil to get good. And some people are like, I'm going to jump in this for a little while. I'm making me a little money. Not like the drug boys. I'm going to drink me a little money. Then I'm going to get out. Well, let me give you a word. Whatever a man sow, he's going to reap. I heard this preacher preach the other day. It's sad how the Christians are sitting down with these worldly artists and they not even, they have no effect on changing their life at all. Because they love music, they just hate God. They just simply hate God. But they love music. And if I never forget, years ago, I'm in a school. This is actually happening. I was in a school, and God spoke to me. He said, they're going to come in the gospel industry. He told me this was years. This was years and years ago. I was at Edison Middle. He showed, after he told me, he said, they're going to come in the gospel industry, but they're going to come in it not really wanting to worship God. Let me tell you, I can't tell if it was that day or the day after. This guy walked in. He was coming to pick up a child. I was at Edison Middle. And he, was, he actually worked for, he worked for this artist for Miami. I'm not going to mention his name. He worked for this artist at Miami who was really nasty. He, 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 back in my back when he was really, really known, but he was really nasty. This actually, what I'm telling you, it actually happened. While we were sitting up front, I didn't even bring up a conversation. We were talking about something. I said, God, he said, he said, yeah, man. He said, man, what's your name? The guy he was talking about, he said, man, he getting ready to jump on this gospel bandwagon. Because, boy, that thing going to blow up and make a lot, a whole lot of money. I looked at him. Remember that God had told me that a while ago. I looked at him, he said, and God said, see, it is manifested. You think because somebody produced gospel music that their heart belonged to God? No. When something becomes popular, people jump on it. And guess what? They can write nice songs, too. Because gifts come without repentance. What gift? The gift to write is come without repentance. They can write nice songs. But it's like false prophets. What do you say about false prophets? He said when they speak to you the truth, he will try your heart to see but they lead you to a false God. I mean, they told you the truth, but if you follow their life, they do not lead you to the true God. What was he saying at that point? Don't be so committed to what somebody say to you that you ignore the direction they're going in, that you no longer see me. This stuff is happening. It's, it's off the chain. It's booming. It's booming, and many people are being deceived. Are deceived. But God said, not my children, right? He said, cast down every imagination, every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Christ means anointed one. Bring that thought into the anointing to what is He says, and having in a re I like this verse, have and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Amen? I wrote like this. Submit to the truth and do it and crush the lie. Be ready to bring disobedience in obedience by fulfilling, allowing the word of God to be fulfilled in your life. Amen? Allow holiness to be fulfilled in your life. And unholiness will be destroyed. Amen. How do we do that? Say how God, how are we gonna do that? Stay in communion. Everybody say stay in communion. I wrote this. I'm gonna write this. John 6 53, 58 says this. Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of my son, eat the flesh of, of the son, a man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He says, how do we get this? How do we get this victory? 
he was telling the disciples that too. When he said, eat of my blood, drink of my flesh, right? And this, he lost so many of the disciples when he was saying, I want you to partake of the fullness of who I am. And so not just what I do. They love what he do. They love. Matter of fact, even the Jews would say, we don't, we're not, we don't, we're not throwing a stone at you because you raised up the dead because you do miracles. We throw a stone because of who you, what you say, because of who you claim to be. So when he told his disciples, drink of my blood, he was saying, I want you to eat of me. I want you to drink of, of my flesh. Eat of me. Partake of me. Don't just partake of what I do. Don't just want to partake. Don't think power is in just what I do. Power is who I am and who you are called to be. And what my word is producing in you, I'm producing in you who I am. I'm producing my love in you. I'm producing, my, I'm producing truth in you. I'm producing kindness. I'm producing forgiveness in you. I'm produ my word is producing in you who I called you to be before the foundation of the world. When I said, let us create man. He, remember I told y'all this last week? He didn't say black man. He ain't say white man. He didn't say Hebrew or Jew. He said, let us create man. And then he said, let us create man. And then he said, I, I want to go, oh, let me read it because I don't want to mess it up. Let me, let me go back here. He said, let us create man. And God said, let us create, let us make man. I'm sorry. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Amen. But then when you go down to verse 27, he says, so God created man in his own image, and in the image God created he, him. He created, who is the him? He created the man, a him, amen? Then he says, male and female created he, them. God, male and female. He didn't say Spanish female. He didn't say Italian male. He didn't say Japanese male, female. That wasn't God. Then it's later on he dressed them in the dust. Then he talked about the dust. And I talked to you about last week. Everything that came out of the dust got color in it. Everything that come out of the dust of the ground got color in it. It's made out of dust. You see a dog, dog got bright. You, you don't see no blue. You see black dogs, right? Brown dogs. Red. It's on, only man got a problem with something because it's a different color. When it actually reveals, the, when, it, when it reveals the beauty of God. Amen? Could you imagine if we was all black? <laughs> if we was all white? Have you ever just sat back and watched other people? You got the bright skin. You got white. You got blue eyes. You got brown eyes. You got gray eyes. You got dark brown eyes. You got curly hair, natural hair. You have, and I don't really believe that God, I know some people preach on that, um, you know, I don't, believe that a woman or a man can be dissatisfied with himself just because they choose to see another style and say, I would like to try that. I don't believe that a woman is dissatisfied with herself or a man that says, well, I'm this, I like that. Oh, I, 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 I love the way, I love the way your generation do this with their hair. I love, so I'm going to try that and see. I just want to see how that works. Now, I think there's a problem if you believe you're trying to escape from who you really are. I believe if you if you feel like you got that that you have to wear straight hair because you feel like you feel better about who you are as a person, short, then I'm like you might want to examine yourself. If you feel there's something wrong with your skin color, maybe black, white, red, or yellow, you better examine yourself. You ought to love you. But as far as some people going talking about, well, if you put if you put your you put a wig on straight or you put your color, no, what people like variety people there's different i could feel good about me and then like something that proper oh i saw he said let me try well i'm not gonna try dress with my hair you know what i'm saying but i can like you can look at somebody and say you know what oh i like the way that girl look in those pair of jeans and that outfit i'm gonna go try that outfit i don't think that that's somebody trying to find their identity in somebody because they thought they saw a nice style which should be oh you probably i want to see how brown eyes look in front of me so i'm gonna try some brown eyes. that doesn't mean that person doesn't like their eyes they want to try something different and the dust that came from the dust is gonna return where's the heart of that person Something some think about. Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I tell you, unless you can eat my flesh of the Son of Man 
and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He's saying, they, do you know what he, it's funny that he's saying this to them, but this is what Jesus said, he's saying this to them, and yet they were doing these miracles. Then he's telling them, but if you don't go, if you can't go deep like this, you ain't got no life in you. And then he says, watch this, he says, no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. He said, I want you to partake of all of me. The very who I am, I want you to partake of. Amen? Amen? See, this, we, we, we got to get to the victory. Amen? We got to get to that victory. Amen? How do I get to that victory? I got to drink of his blood and eat of his flesh. Because just trying to move in power, many of them turned away after that. They turned away. But it seemed like even the ones who drank of his blood and ate of his flesh and say, Lord, watch what they what, watch it. When he turned to them and said, You're gonna leave too? That's what Peter said. He said, Lord, where shall we go? For in you are the words that lead to eternal life. He said, Lord, where shall we go? For in you are the so I'm gonna eat of your flesh. I'm a, you wanna grow in God, you wanna become strong in your walk in God, then you gotta believe when you hear the word of God, it came from God. You gotta believe that it's true. You gotta believe and know that word is effectively working in you, even though things may look crazy. That word is transforming you to be the woman and man of God has called you to be before the foundation of the world. You have authority and power in that word, and that word is producing in you what God designed you to be before you even knew you. Amen? That word is not going to return void when you receive it. It's producing. And he said, think it not strange when trials come. Because wow, I'm producing in you to be that woman of God. I'm producing you to be that man of God. I'm producing you to produce godly offsprings. I'm working in you. I'm working in you. I'm working in you. I'm working in you. Getting rid of some things. Whosoever eat of my flesh and drink of my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my, watch this, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Remember me, Christ's sacrifice. I wrote this down. And this, and this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God went, sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a right, propitiation for our sins. Propitiation means a, 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 it's to, what? to sanctify the wrath of, I mean, I'm sorry, to satisfy the wrath of God. He was the sacrifice to satisfy the wrath of God. Amen. He was the love of God. He is, he is the love of God. Christ is the love of God. So what he's working you when you accept Christ, he's, Christ is teaching you how to love God. Amen. How to please God. How to love your father and please your father. He's teaching us that. But for us, but this is what I, this is the part that, um, that I, uh, let's go to uh, First Corinthians, and we on in it on here. Let's go to First Corinthians eleven, because when he said God reminded me, he said, "Drink my," and I said, for, "I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna ask you all for the next seven days. You're gonna have to get it yourself. I won't have it for you. You're gonna just to take communion, to take communion." For the next seven days, make it happen to commune. Why? Because what God began to show me was the power. Can we go? Can we get back? And we're going to give it out tonight. And the reason I want to, he said communion, because as I'm trying, as, as we're going and we're bringing every thought into God, we, and the word of God is working in us, we have to remember the love of God that will give you the strength to stand against the enemy. And communion, he tell, and I'm, I'm going to read it. Uh, I'm going to have, I'm going to have, um, vastly read it. Verse, First Corinthians chapter 11, 23 and 26, while she's reading it. 
what God began to show me was that to commune with someone. Because what you are, because when you are called, it's one thing about calling. And it's nothing about communing with someone to exchange thoughts. Amen. My read definition one was to exchange thoughts, to exchange the intimacy of thoughts with someone, to commune with them. So God began to say, what gives me the victory over the enemy to capture the thoughts and to bring it? In? If I'm communing with God, who I am communing with, I'm not just calling, I'm communing with him. I'm exchanging thoughts. I'm exchanging. He's ex telling me what he's feeling. I'm in communion with, I'm communing with, I'm going deeper than just what I want him to do for me. And what I'm doing, I'm going Going through, I'm partaking of his flesh, which is life. I'm partaking of the of his blood. I'm communing with, I'm partaking of him, which will give me strength against the enemy. To commune with him is to partake of him that will give you, which would give you life and eternal life. But in what who you are communing with will give you strength. And God, the, God says, the problem with some of us and why we are battling and why we battle, you're not communing with him. And we're like that when Jesus talked about communing with him, when they, well, watch this, when Jesus talked about communing with him, when he said, drink of my blood and eat of my flesh, they said, this is a hard thing. And some of us, when things get hard, we walk away instead of communing with him. Instead of understanding, if he tell you, he know what he's doing in your life. If he's calling you communing with him, if he's asking you today to come commune with him, to partake of his flesh and to partake of his blood, to partake of his body, then he wants you to commune with him to give you victory over the things that you're struggling with. He said the next seven days, some of us are going to realize through this communing, I'm going to be in my word, I'm communing with him. I'm going to partake of his blood. But then, as, can you ready to read it? Go ahead and read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, mm -hmm. that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Mm -hmm. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do it, do, it, do it why? In remembrance of me. Do it why? In remembrance. I want everybody, did everybody get one? Give it one. He said, I want you to remember what was broken for you. So you can have the strength through temptation when they come at you. I want you to remember what was broken. Because the Bible says we love him because he loved us first. Just, just, just the adults. He says, when you do communion, communion is a remembrance of the price that was paid for you to be free. And when I'm remembering what price that was paid to be free, then I got power to cast down the enemy trying to bring me into bondage or something. Amen? When I remember there was a price paid. Amen? I mean, there was a price paid. In other words, your gift came from God. Your freedom came from God, but it came through a body being sacrificed. It came, what sacrifice? It came through an offering of love. The love, there's no greater love than one who would lay down his life. Your gift that sustains you, the gift that transforms you, the gift that will give you power over the work of the enemy is the body that was broken for you. He said, do this in remembrance. He said, I want you to do this. Why? Because you're going to need to remember. How many of us know sometimes we can be walking with God so long that your memory start getting short? Come on. Oh, y'all don't want to pray. Your memory start getting short. Your memory start getting short. You start forgetting who died for you. You start forgetting the price. You start thinking about other things. You start, what God, I'm going to tell you how God told me. You start focusing on things that ain't got nothing to do with what God actually did for you to be free. You start focusing. Your mind starts, he said, you know, and the enemy, even how, I'm going to tell you what he do. He'll get you just like he got Eve. He got Eve to start focusing on that tree. And as she focused on it, it began to look different to her. It no longer looked the way God designed it and how God spoke on it. It began to look how the enemy spoke on it. And the enemy will get you to sometimes focus on your weakness. 
Sometimes he'll get you to focus on the things that you can't have. Like if you're single, he'll get you to focus on being married. To the place where you're focusing on every day, all day, every day, dreaming about it. You're focusing on that. That is not what God told you to bring you peace. Getting married don't save you. He'll get you to focus on your gifts, your talent, and not be focused on all the time. What God going to do for me? My, my arts. My gift. No, you focus on him. When he called me, watch this. Peter, see Jesus doing something he can't do. Amen. The word is now walking on the storm. Amen. He sees him. This is the sad part. I, to me, the, one of the biggest saddest part about that story is that Peter is the only one that wanted to do what Jesus was doing. There's 12 disciples on the, on the ship, but Peter is the only one that at least says, I want to do what Jesus is doing. I want to be able to walk on storms. And he sees, he sees them. See, because why? He want to do it. So Jesus said, I want you to eat of me. I want you to drink of me. I want you to know. I, what is he saying? Drink of, learn of my love. Because the, bu- the, the blood and the body, these are things that were poured out and broken. And it was an act of God's love for you. Remember his love for you. And you will be able to combat the enemy. But we start focusing. He said, my people, they start focusing on this. And Satan's job is to get you to focus on what you think, what you want God to do for you instead of what God is doing in you. Or what you ask him for. Ask him for this. Ask him for that. And you won't go. And he got you focusing on this day, night, evening. Focusing. You focus on. See, if you focus on the love, then you. You're not worried about God doing what he do because you know he loves you. See, a child doesn't worry about eating because they focus on the mama and the dad. Amen? Read it. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in he remembrance says, I want of you me. To do this as often. So, guys, I want you to do it for the, everybody in this room, everybody on YouTube. Get your communion. If you got to go to the store and get you some grape juice, get you some. For the next seven days, Commune with God. Put yourself in position. I don't know what God getting ready to do. But I know we be obedient. And we drink of this blood. And we eat of this blood. And we understand that this is an act of God's love to free you. Whatever you're struggling with. May it be lust, thoughts. Whatever you are in battle with. God I'm going to drink of your blood. I'm going to drink of your blood. I'm going to eat of your flesh in remembrance of the love and what you have given unto me to set me free. How do I know? Remember, remember, remember what was said before that, before we had the communion? He said, wait a minute. John 6, 58 says, Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you and sometimes we feel like when you don't have no life in you you always feel like you need something to bring life amen satan got me focused god satan satan i have focus on well if i don't have sex i don't really have life i feel empty if i don't have if i don't have money i don't have life i'm real empty. i'm really empty he said but jesus is saying here if you drink of my blood if you don't drink of my blood there's no life in you. He said the reason why you feel like he said the reason why you don't feel life in you, you ain't filling yourself with the right thing. You're not communing with the right person. You're not communing with the right spirit. Amen. So go ahead and read. Verse 26. Mm-hmm. For as often as you eat this bread. Mm-hmm. And drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. 
you proclaim the price that was paid until he comes. As often as you do this, for the next day, seven, you're proclaiming God's death. What did he die for? What did he die for? So you're proclaiming for the next seven days, he died for that. That thing, he died for that. I'm free from that. Every time I drink, break, take a part of his body and drink a blood, I'm free for that. He, he, his body was broken on that cross. His blood was shed for me no longer to have thoughts on porn or, or thoughts of, of anger or bitterness. I'm free. I'm, uh -uh. I'm free from this. I'm capturing this because this thing is trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. I'm bringing it in. Why? By remembering what Jesus did. I'm getting rid of anger today. I'm getting rid of bitterness today. Why? I'm going to do this in remembrance. I'm going to remember. Read, read, read that, that part again. Watch what he, listen to what he says. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. How many know in his death where you receive life? It was out of his death that you and I got life. So what you going to tell the enemy for the next seven days, I know who died for me. I'm free. Amen. Amen. Because without his death, we remain in sin. Mm -hmm. Ransom pay. I'm going to remind myself for the next seven days that there were, no. Mm -mm. I'm not, uh uh uh. Lust ain't going to have no control over me. Greed ain't going to have no control over me. Self ambition ain't going to have no control over me. Vanity ain't going to have no control over me. Pride ain't going to, why? He died for me to be free. So, Let's stand up for a minute. Watch people. I want you to open it up. And before you take this, be, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm going to tell you. you see? I'm going to tell you before we take this. There's a process before we get to here, before we take this. Because this is not a joke. Communion is not a joke. Sometimes in church, it becomes a routine. We got communion Sunday. Everybody get dressed up. They bring out the table. They go over it. No. It, it, it's, it's deeper than that. It's so deep that he's talk, he talk, it's related to understanding death and life. He said, if you don't, he told them, if he said, if you drink not of my blood, eat my flesh, there is no life in you. But then he says, if you partake, yeah, he says this transitioned what when he gave his his his, his blood and like transitioned us his death transitioned us to life. So when we do this in remembrance, we are reminding ourselves he gave me life. And if you believe he gave you life and gave me life, he said do it. Remember, because sometimes we forget. That he done gave you the greatest gift. See, in a time where people are trying to convince you, no, this is this, this what enough. The greatest gift he gave you was his body. The greatest gift, the most powerful he gift he gave us was his blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no forgiveness without the blood. The body, his body, bared the sin, bared our sins. You are sin free. In your, when we say we believe the word, not that it came from man, but it came from God. We, but it, was, it is a truth and it came from God. And we believe. I believe what the, what the man of God preached. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I believe that his body was broken for me. I believe his blood was shed for me that I may have eternal life. That's the problem. Eternal life. There is no gift greater than eternal life. What is a man to gain the whole world? What if you're able to see in your legs and yet you, you're, still, you're still going to hell? He said, I paid the price that you may have eternal life. Eternal life. Somebody help him with that, please. Y'all do me a favor when y'all come here. Make sure those phones are on silent, please. Okay, thank you. Eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. Read that part again one more time. 
It's so good. I want us to get it because I don't, I don't know the magnitude, but I believe God, just, I know he's going to give us victory. He's going to give you victory. Amen? On, on Zoom, on, 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 on Zoom he's going to give you victory. And some of us are going to be like, well, I better get communion. You, if you believe this word, you're going to go get communion. Yeah. Yeah. And faith. Faith, read it. For as often as you eat this bread mm -hmm. and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Keep going. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. When you drink and you drink this or you eat this without understanding death, the, the price that was paid for your salvation, you, you make lightly of it. That's why I'm like, it's a situation like, okay, we're going to do this. No, you can take a whole sermon, a whole, a whole service, amen? Every month, every week, and go over this to get the full understanding of what this is about. And I don't believe that God started this sermon out the way he started. He started out this sermon taking us back to Thessalonians, the second chapter, two and three. Walk worthy. Let us walk worthy. Amen? I received the word, not that it come from man, but it came from God, the truth. I believe that it's, it's symbolic to me in remembrance of the price that Jesus prayed, paid for me. Amen? I believe he took all my sins. Amen? Yeah, I believe it. And he wants me to remember that because if I got to, that his death took all my, if I don't remember his sins, I'm going to tell you, the Bible says if there's remembrance of sin, we talked about it. We're studying this in Hebrews right now about what Jesus, what the, when the priests before Jesus, there was always remembrance of sin, right? Because the priests every year had to go in. Jesus went in one time. He said, what I want you to do is partake. I'm not dying again, but I want you to partake of the bread and the wine to remember that I died that you are sin free. Come on, y'all. Remember that our, when the enemy, when he come accusing you, remember. When he come and tell you that you can't be saved or you can't be forgiven or God ain't with you, remember. The death. That death, the body and that blood was shed the death that brought you and I life. Finish it. Was that it? Okay. Verse 28. But let a man examine himself. That's what we got to do first. Everybody in this room, including me, it's time, to, I mean, here today, is examine Do I believe? Do I believe that his body was broken for my sins? Do I believe in the cross that his blood was shed? There was no blood left in that body. They said they pierced his side, it drank. There was no blood. His blood was poured out for me. When I drank this, I remember the blood that tells me I am forgiven. When I partake of this body, it remembers that it was broken for my sins. I need to remember this when the enemy keep coming at me talking about you ain't saved. When my desires slip up, uh-uh, I'm a new creature. Why? Price paid. So let's examine ourselves. Kelly, you want to pray? Kelly, pray. Um, pray for the exam. Pray to do this part right here. Turn the mic on. Listen. 
check. Amen. Look, let's, let's, let's bow our heads. Amen. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord. We just want to give honor to you. Even before, Father God, we partake of your body and partake of your blood. Just like the word just said, let us examine, Father God. Let us examine, Father God, if there's anything, Lord God, any and everything, Father God, that may so easily beset you, Father God, we lay it at your feet at this point, Father God. We lay it at your feet, Father God, and we just thank you, Father God. We just thank you, Lord. We, we honor you and thank you, Father God, for your body, Father God. We thank you, Lord, Father God, that you took the time to come down, Father God. Come to this earth, Father God, and bear through what you've done, bear through, Father God. We thank you for every lash, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for every broken piece of your body. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. And even, Father God, even as we take, I personally like to literally break it in my hand. Yes. Even yes. as we break this body yes. symbolically, Father God, this is this is the very thing, Father God, we've been asking for. This is our restoration, Father God. This is, Father God, the very, the outpour, the, the, the strength that we've been seeking for. Personally, Father God, we thank you, Lord. And we break your body, Lord God. And we partake of it, Lord. We partake every last bit of it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we savor it, Father God. We take our time, Father God, because that's what you did, Lord God. And we 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 swallow. We thank you, Lord God, because this is symbolic, Father God, of your word. It's symbolic, Father God, of 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 just who you are, Lord God. And also, in the same manner, we take we take your blood. And oh, how precious is the blood of Jesus. It's fresh, just like the Bible says, it's yes, fresh, Lord. just like the, the, the blood of, um, of Abel, it's, it talks to God. Yes. This blood, it talks just like it was spilled just yesterday. Glory be to God. Father God, we thank you. And, and just like in biblical times, this was a, a very, though it was a somber time, we don't have to be somber, Father God, because if actually this is a celebration, we yes, celebrate, yes. Father God, your blood. Yes. We celebrate yes. your blood. Thank I'm you, sorry, Jesus. Lord. We celebrate Thank your life, you. Father yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. And, and just as we celebrate your life, we can celebrate life, Lord God, Thank because you, the Jesus. Bible says life is in the blood, yes. Father God. Thank you, Jesus. And Father God, even as I raise this up, yes, this, this life has power, Father God, to bring forth healing, yes. bring forth deliverance, yes, Father God. Lord. It has the power to shift mindsets, yes, Father God. Lord, this has the power to resurrect the dead. So yes, even Lord, as we partake you, of it, Father God, thank let you. it do what it does best and get, bring forth life even in the, the, the dead places, Lord God. And we just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, and we partake it now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, give your father some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh gracious and glorious God. Thank you. And Lord, give us the obedience and the courage, Father God, to do this for the next six seven days god to commune with you to remember god lord many of us need to remember god i need to remember many of us need to remember god that which you have given to us oh gracious and glorious father the love that you gave to us in giving us your son god for it is written in your word that we love him because he loved us first and he gave his life for us so we thank you, God, for breaking the shackles and chains off our hearts and minds, God. Lord, we come against every lie of the adversary, God. Every thought, God. Every spirit, unclean spirit, the spirit of deception, God. We come against it, oh gracious and glorious God. We thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke, God. 
For it is written in your word, whom the Spirit of the Lord has set free is free indeed. We thank you for the gift that you have given us to us in Christ Jesus, the gift of eternal life. Because you gave your life, we have eternal life. God, I pray and I ask you in Jesus' name, even as everyone under my voice, God, in the, Father God, on the, on the Zoom, in the classroom, on Facebook, God, they will, it, it come, that you will come in dreams, God, that you will come in visions, oh gracious and glorious, God, that there will be such an encounter over the next seven days to remember the love, to remember the power and authority in which you call us to walk in, in your son, in your spirit. To cast down every and anything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. Being ready to revenge the disobedience with, obe with the fulfillment of obedience. We are who you have called us to be and we shall do that which you have called us to do for your word will not return void. We receive your word, God. And it is effectually working in us who believe. It is transforming us, delivering us, and preparing us for your coming. We honor you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give God some praise, y'all? Come on, man. I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do and what God is doing. I believe strongholds and deliverance Amen. I believe, uh, please hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I believe that every trick and trap that Satan would have, trapped is, would have tried is going to come to not, it's going to wither and be crumpled and be crumbled. Amen. I believe, how many of us believe I'm going to do and finish, I'm going to finish this race God has set before me. Amen. I'm going to finish this race before what God has set before me. I'm going to do. Amen. It was a scripture that said, for me and my house, we're going to do what? Lord, we're going to serve the Lord and be about our Father's business. Amen. I have been obedient to God and given us what God wanted us to have. Don't take lightly. And as the man of God said, and put emphasis on, I'm going to put emphasis on even more. Examine. As we took partook of it. I remember, man, I'm so glad Jesus died for me. Anybody glad Jesus died for you? Come on, y'all. I, I am glad Jesus died for me. I am glad Jesus died for you. Amen. Because in his death, we got life. Amen. We got eternal life. Hey! We got eternal life in his death. Amen. And I don't know if anybody want to share anything. I don't know why y'all put that way real quick. I just want to leave the mic off. If anybody desire to share something, I want um, to give that time. I don't know if anybody want to share anything. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Oh, that's crazy. Amen. Okay. Sure. Amen. 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 Come on, share with us. You gotta come on up. Come on up here. So don't be shame. Come up here and show. I know it had to be somebody. I'm like, I share something. Uh, last time I was here, you gave me. Oh, my name is Goffey, by the way. I don't know if I met everybody last time. Hey, hey. Come you on, gave you me a task. Oh, sorry. Hey. You gave me a task to read Ephesians chapter one. Amen. So I read through it. Spent Amen. the whole week thinking about it. There was one, a few, a few chapters that stuck out to me, and it said, "This is the redemption of Christ." Excuse me, I'm not really a public speaker. I apologize if I seem nervous. Oh, do you? Do do you? You okay? And in the first uh, redemptions in Christ, it said three: "Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He has chose us in Him before the foundation of the world." that we should be holy and without blame before him, before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Now, what I took from that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Go ahead. correct me if I'm wrong, it says that he loves us so much yes. that even if 
the only way I could explain it is like, imagine you have a son, and your son has a best friend that lives across the street. You don't know what's going on in your house, but you know that your son has a best friend. Sorry, I seem nervous. I'm not really no, no, just, you, you're good, though. We, you're good. Your son has a friend across the street. You don't know what's going on in the house, but you know that your son has a best friend. So what he's saying is that that may not be my child in, at the beginning, but if he's friends with my son, that is my child too. Amen. You know what I mean? So, Amen. Amen. You know, over there, I eat McDonald's. Over here, I got steak, I got potatoes. And what he's saying when he said that is that, you know, my door is always open. If you're hungry, you're thirsty, come over. But all you got to do is walk across the street. That's what I took from that. Okay. And I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you what I love about what you, what you took from it. What I love about what he took from it is the simplicity of understanding that I know where God is. Amen. I know where I'm at. I know there's a step into the direction of God. There's a love there. Amen. And in that love, there's a price paid. I'm going to tell you what was so interesting about what he read to in Ephesians. That one, he actually read the whole sermon, somewhat the whole sermon of what God talked about today in Ephesians. Why? The, Bible, the, the word of God doesn't change. If he's talking to the Ephesians, he talk, it doesn't change. It doesn't change the gift that God has given us. And when you come over, like, like the man of God said, when you come over in the Father's house, there is stake. In the Father's house, there's a transition of life and the way you live life. Amen? In the Father's house, I said it, I said it earlier, without God, we sin make us sin is ugly. But God called you to be beautiful. So what does God have to do? He, you, God sent his son to take the ugly. Because there wasn't nothing beautiful about that cross or that beat down. So his son took the ugly that you and I be made, be made beautiful in the eyesight of God. Amen? And as we grow, we're increasing. And one thing I'm learning from God in this message, God talking about he's talking about building his body, God, I'm telling y'all, hear me what I'm about to say. This, I'm saying it to you all. I'm saying it to myself first. There is an expectation of maturing that God is saying to his sons and daughters. There is an expectation of maturing. But in that expectation, there is not condemnation, but there is a chastening, too, of us maturing and growing in God. Amen? That somebody may see the glory of God in your life. Does anybody have anything? Anybody have anything to say on Zoom? Anybody on Zoom? Any? Everybody good on Zoom? Thumbs up. Everybody good? Okay, we got some thumbs up. We got some thumbs up. Okay. Everybody good? Okay. Amen. That's why I like Zoom because it's like you're in the classroom too. You know what I'm saying? But I thank God, man. I'm. I, 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 I'm. Listen to me. If y'all think. Please do it in the morning or do it, do it. I'm not saying, but take communion for the next seven days. Amen. Get into your word. Oh, it's breaking off. There's going to be a breakthrough, breaking off. In Jesus' name, amen. Closing doors and opening doors in Jesus' name. I, I'm excited about it. Amen. I'm excited about what God's doing in my life. I'm excited about what God, what he's doing in your life. Because remember, the, what was the title of the sermon? See if y'all remember the title of the sermon. God knows what he's doing in your life. You might not even understand seven days of, of, of this, but God knows what he's doing in your life. You might not understand. You got a young brother coming in. You got, you might I, what I love about this sermon tonight, you might not understand everything that's happening, but God know what he's doing in your life. He know what he's preparing you for. Amen? You can find rest and peace in that. Because he ain't caught off God on nothing. God is not caught off on God. Caught off God. Amen? Amen.
Is everybody, let me, I, I know we, we did this, but we, is anybody in this room, is there anybody in this house room that never accepted Jesus Christ? If you never accepted Jesus Christ, well, I, that, I hope when you examine yourself, you might, if you never accept Jesus Christ, well, we're going, all good, amen? Amen, okay, let's go.